You just found Mind Pump. All right, uh, we're going to give away another workout program today. MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilder-inspired workout program. Very effective. Here's how you can win free access to that workout program. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. Make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, you'll win free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Also, turn on your notifications. Subscribe to this channel. Two reasons, okay? One, you got to leave a comment in the first 24 hours in order to enter into these contests to win free stuff. Two, if you win, you'll get notified that you won. If you don't do that, the prize will just sit there collecting dust. Nobody will win anything. That's very, very sad. Also, a uh, huge promotion this month. We are putting MAPS Aesthetic 50% off, so that's on sale. And then we have an Extreme Fitness Bundle, which is multiple programs put together. That's 50% off. So you can learn more about those or just sign up at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code MAYSPECIAL with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. He has the best day in the life is Justin. By far. Why do you say that? I don't know They're just good. That. They're just, I want to see them. They're interesting. He always makes it interesting. Well, yeah. I, just get yeah, I like all your guys, but uh, it's the same thing all the time. Mine mm. too. Well, speaking of day in the life, we get a lot of uh, questions about people, where to find a uh, day in life. Every Wednesday, okay, we've committed to this now, and obviously we're only going to stick to it if you guys enjoy it and keep keep following. It's, it's for sure gets the most views on the main IG page. So as far as I know, we'll continue doing that. Um, but we're not saving it, so you have to go watch it. That's the idea. Yeah. So everyone's like, "Oh, okay, you snooze, you, you lose." Save it. it's up there for it's up for twenty four hours after it's posted. So for forty eight hours, you can catch it. So you just got to know that's on Wednesdays that we do it, and we just rotate through each guy, right? So we got four four dudes there right here that uh, go through it, and so every week there's somebody that's on there. Check but out you, how we live, yo. You, it's so weird. <laughs> So weird. It's like, uh, Check out my crib. Yeah, I woke I up. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my pump. Look at my car. car. Yeah. Here's yeah. what I eat. Yeah. Here's what I do. People like yeah. that, man. People, I hang out over here. People are really into. I mean, I, I'm such a I'm such a I get creature it. of habit, though. That that I. It's like, what do well, I do? Well, this that's is why I, I make things up, so it looks like I'm doing. You make things, things up. Yeah, yeah. This is, this no, make things that's up. not really no, a day in the life. That's then. that's your real life. Don't lie. It is. Well, this I had. I talked to Doug about this. You guys, believe it or not, it's. I'm walking on. It's more interesting than you guys. You guys think. I mean, it's not interesting to you. Like Doug was like, I don't, you know, what do I do? I'm like, I just, I'm working all day. I'm like, yeah, but that's interesting to Be people. Be Doug. And yeah, go. share what you are doing all day. So a lot of people think it's that- It's a lot of him walking his dog. Have you noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot yeah. of stuff with it's, Bella. It's all he it's does? True. Or sitting in front no, of no, my no. life. No, it, in the videos. Because yeah, he's the always videos, showing. Yeah, yeah. By the way, yeah. that dog's adorable. Yeah. That's the cutest little dog of all Did time. you see that we were walking she and owes. because Doug in com passing conversation said the word vaccine, it got thrown up on my, yeah. you get the warning and everything like that. And Wow, they're oh, listening they're, they're that vigilant. intently? Yes. Vigilant about He's stuff. talking in that we're walking uh, the other day when we were out getting sun. This episode's going to say that now, right? Yeah, I, know. I know. Isn't that yeah. wild We've though? we flagged. That he, all he said was vaccine. And it pops up, the CDC warning popped up. It wasn't even me, it was him in what the back. What a weird time to be alive. Because you have, on one hand, you have countries and people that are in, in governments, in nefarious groups, that really try to pump in information to fuck with other countries, right? So mm -hmm. let's say, for example, you know- Which, by the way, we do to other countries too. We do that too, right? So let's say, right, you're in a pandemic. Thank let's, you for being fair. I'm going to create, you know. create another scenario. You probably started that game, huh? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you gave him the fucking playbook. <laughs> so let's, let's I'm going to create another scenario. Let's say that there's a pandemic and there's a vaccine that actually solves it and you're in another country that competes with this country and you want them to succumb to it. Then what you do is you pump that country full of, information about the medicine making people not want to use it there's that right mm -hmm. but then there's the, also the like well what if it's true mm -hmm. like what what if what if this is a, you know an issue or what about this or what it's like what a weird time dude well i'm taking the russian vaccine i don't know about you guys are you really yeah. <laughs> you just want to see what it does woke up in the morning with <laughs> turn into a bear grizzly claws yeah <laughs> riding a horse with no shirt on yeah. you guys ever seen that picture of putin yeah it's like the most, I'm not a Putin fan, by the way, except for he does judo, which is kind of cool. He's a black belt. Yeah. He's uh, on a horse and he's riding it with no shirt on. He's like, fucking just. <laughs> you know is what it I mean? a real photo he's or is it photoshopped? No, dude. It's a real, I mean, I'm sure he staged it, yeah. but he's actually on a horse riding it with no shirt on. Let me see this, Douglas. Yeah. And then we have like, and then, you know, look at our presidents. Like, I know. He's, you know, he's asleep somewhere. Forgot, forgot, you know, what, he's, he's, forgot what he was going to say. So you got to go wake him up. Look at that, dude. 
Like, I'm fucking manly. <laughs> That's what I am. <laughs> Look at that. That is pretty alpha right oh, there. Yeah, dude. And you, you ever watch those videos of him doing judo and shit? Like kicking people's asses? <laughs> Wasn't he the head of the KGB at one point or something? Or he worked in the KGB? Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Now, obviously, in in, in Russia, he's he's revered, right? I mean, uh, people love him, uh, right? I mean, how does he, how did he get in? How does he keep winning? Too? Right. That's why I want to know. How does, he, how does he stay in power? Uh, it's it's not, I think, from what I think, I know there's he won. There's a little bit of tyranny there. And then he's like, because he can't sir, he can't be the, the head guy anymore, so he moved into another position, but he actually controls. I don't know, hmm. but there's arguments. People disappear is what I know. There's arguments yeah. that Can you say school that, me on like Russian politics? Like, how does it work over there? No? You don't know? Not much. Uh, not okay. much. But what, I, what I've heard is people say that it's not not as free as you think or as honest as you think or whatever i don't know it, I, it, I thought they're they're one of the countries with one of the largest black markets aren't they for what i don't just all things in general i thought they well during the soviet union they had lots of black markets for mm -hmm. everything yeah i had a friend look I had, that up doug i'm curious well, about especially that. like jeans right like levi's jeans and stuff I largest black big. markets in the world that's america dude we have the in terms Do of dollars in terms of dollars america the anything, largest anything, anything has to do with dollars, we crush. Really, because we're so free, I would think that's not true. I would think that. Are we? Well, I mean, we? in comparison to <laughs> other we? countries, yeah. in comparison to other countries, we're very free. Depends on what you're talking about. See, there you go, easy. The highest number of black markets in the world, of course. We have the biggest m amount of money in America. Does it no, say we're big it said, Where's top ten? Should, give, me the, give me the next one. It right underneath it, it says top ten countries, largest black markets in the world. Like China, I would think would be up there well, because China, we're doubled. China looks like. Yeah, oh, you saw a double. Yeah. Oh yeah, China's China, too. Okay. Mexico. Wow, Mexico, Spain, Italy. Yeah, Japan, Canada. Wow, India, United Kingdom, and then Russia. Russia's ten. Yeah, mm. so they're not not that big. Yeah, I had a client that I trained that went to Russia. His parents, I forgot what they did, uh, but they went there, and this was during this was in the eighties, right? So this is during the when the Soviet Union was around. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, there were people were like behind the scenes offering me so much money for my Nikes oh, wow. or my Levi's. He's like, there were black markets for like milk, you know, because otherwise if you wait in line for your milk and if you don't get it, they have to create black markets to kind of it's crazy. So messed up. How yeah. do they, how do you think they measure that? Measure what? Black markets. Like how, I mean, how do they That's know? That's true, huh? Yeah. Like it's black. Yeah, <laughs> it's not very black if it's if it's if they know the number. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, they obviously, Maybe. have somebody in there that like you know is is in it's the system. A, yeah, it's but an it's estimate. A, you know, it's a like very general, not very precise estimate. Yeah. I mean, come on, how it's do you like? It's like the science stuff, Adam. You're always like, <laughs> yeah. how do they know how old that tree is? <laughs> That's why I got to point this stuff out. I mean, come on, like people, we just we we read it, we read it on Google, and automatically like, oh yeah, definitely black six hundred billion, yeah, six hundred yep. billion yeah. there, like. Okay. That's a stat that was there. Probably so I, because I it. It, it's based off of the amount of drugs that we catch and amount of stuff that we see that then they create an estimate, right? Well, maybe mm. there's a formula. Like, I mean, we can't obviously track a lot of, we can track the legitimate money that's in circulation. And if we know the total amount of monies that are out in circulation and you subtract that, maybe that's how that, there's got to be a logical method. You know, well, they took down like that one um, website, the, the Silk Road, and, and that was a, a huge. Uh, it was generating a ton of money of, in the black market. So I'm wondering if maybe they're they're getting it and pulling it from a lot of those like uh, type of websites and getting their analytics. I know, but then what, what, how, what's the uh, what's the formula? Ten x that, seven x that, hundred x that? Like, I mean, you just yeah, make it up. right, right. So uh, my guess, or, you know, I'm totally I have no idea, right? So maybe somebody much smarter than me can school me right on this. Uh, I would think that we have an idea of how much total money is in circulation. And what's trackable as far as paying taxes and stuff, and then you would subtract. That. I don't even think they have. I, that's so hard. They don't I, have any clue. I mean, I feel like that's be the most accurate way. They don't know how much money's in circulation, how much is actually being used. They don't have. They don't. They're like they don't, big number, and then they just throw. Yeah, it away. they don't. They don't know all that. I think it's more like we estimate. Do you have a dog in this fight, Doug? I don't. No, you have no Woo! idea. He no. used to be a kingpin in the black market. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. He has him. so many aliases. He's a big black market yeah. guy. That's yeah, what yeah. I thought. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> out of all of us, he's the black market. Yeah. Guy. Just in that. Have you bought anything black market? <laughs> how do what? you do that? That's yeah. how I, I mean, other I mean, than like going to somebody, right? I mean, you could buy something unintentionally like on the black drug market. dealers count, yeah. or like stereo system, <laughs> yeah. or like yeah. your speakers. You're oh, like, oh, you know what? That did happen to me once. Yes, I, I see. I told you. I knew yeah, that. that, that probably bought some. I got, black I got, I got like bamboozled totally, like with so, a shitty stereo or something. Yeah. So 
Yeah, I was, and I was close by to, I was like a Best Buy and I was, I was driving by and this guy like approached me in the parking lot. Of course, it's like such a hustle. And he had this, the speakers that I wasn't even really interested in speakers, but I saw them and like he even played them and everything and they worked really well. And he was like, I'm going to give you these for like a fraction of the cost or whatever. And, uh, and so I, I was like, nah, I'm not interested, whatever. I don't have money. And so he actually followed me to go to like the, the ATM. Wow. I pulled money out. Out and then you know bought him thinking I'd give it as a present to like you know my brother or whatever and I didn't even cross my mind that they were stolen they're hot you know like duh of course so I got hustled the same way wait did they work hold on a second were they good they yeah, did work yeah they did work oh, but fuck. they're totally stolen so yeah. you got a good deal it was a fire sale that's not a bad yeah, was, I got hustled where the guy said that he had two um she bought the stereo system online and they sent him two and he gave me the receipt of what it was, showed me everything. It was the, the the two, one was not boxed, the other one was boxed. And he's like, I'll give you this for like half the price. It was something ridiculous, it was a couple hundred bucks for something that was worth like a thousand yeah. some dollars and yeah. totally suckered me into it. And then I went home and plugged him in, then it work. Oh. Yeah, so that, that, was, worse. Yeah, that was I was Ooh. really very sad. That's, very, very. How sick. old were you? Uh, twenty. It was when I worked at Calvin McKee. So. Damn, you were in your twenties. That's you like when caught? you find out. Yeah. The well, stripper shit. That's when I had like that kind of money where I could even afford to do that. He caught. He caught me coming out of work. Uh, headed my car to the in the parking lot and swung in and showed me like the stereo system and. I was, you know, probably gave it away too because I was a young. At that eight, remember, was the age when you had like stereo systems in your car, so yeah. I had like three twelve. That was back. a thing back in the day, wasn't it? It's oh, still yeah. a thing. I was thinking about getting something the other day. Well, hold yeah. on a second. It's hold still, on a second. Still I don't cool see thing. it as much. It's not as popular well, because well, cars, CDs are the worst. I always get stolen. cars come now. I t- cars I, come. I take with, that back. It's it is as we just we're older and we hang out. No, with, we don't no. hang out with a bunch of. I don't think it's that big of a deal like it used to be. Because back back no no you know why? Because back then. Nice cars still had shitty stereo system. You had to put in an aftermarket. Now mm-hmm. they come with pretty damn good system. Not I mean, like you would, you know, want. Yes and no. Like I mean, uh, very like luxury cars have always had nice stereo systems. Uh, that's kind of that's one of the typical things of the upgrade that you get when you buy a hundred thousand dollar car. But uh, what what I will agree with you is that like a, a Chevy truck now has Bose speakers. That's in. what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So and like like but my this both are I mean we have the same truck, Justin and I, and we all do now, right? The, those stereo the stereo system it sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I mean I still would prefer a little. Really? Yeah. Little yeah. Was, yeah. Like, like yeah, a bassy. Not yeah. crazy like two tens. Yeah, two tens mm-hmm. isn't like over the top. You Are know? you gonna be that guy where you, you hit the, you turn on and it <laughs> everything no. vibrates? I can and hear the shutters. Yeah, no, I can hear the, the, the license no, plate. No, 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 no. That's when you go over. That's over. That's like kid shit. That's when I was a yeah. kid. I did. But two tens is not. I mean, that's a. See, I always wanted that. I I always had the truck though that was like so loud because it went straight through the like the exhaust went right through yeah, you the headers it, right at the yeah. Cadillac converter. You cut it off, and so it was just like so obnoxious and loud. It's like yeah. what's the point of even having a loud music? I can't compete yeah. with this. I got I got a. Uh, what is it? Not the, sub, the subwoofer tube. What is that called? Uh, subtube. It was a color subtube. Okay. Yeah. And there was, remember uh, Fosgate Punch? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. a good brand. Right? Yeah, that was Rockford a good brand. Fosgate Punch. That was yeah. a very good brand. Well, anyway, I went to the flea market and I saw one and it was called Crunch. And it looked <laughs> sick. I've seen that. Straight from Tijuana. I, I thought it was just, it was, I'm like, and you know me, dude, I'm always yeah. like, fuck, it's, it's a Dude, I, I bought it's my share deal. of Folkley's, so. Did you? Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, I wonder sucked. statistically well, how much that actually, um, that actually works some people like when people brand things like similar to but it's not exactly the same and it's like made to look like like these your example you just brought like yeah you weren't the only it works enough yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. you obviously did it i'm, I'm sure i'm guilty of doing it i mean shit I, I think i've shared this before um, when i was a kid my grandma used to send us clothes like every i don't know six months i get a box of clothes and it always had like nike and all the name brand stuff on it but when I, later on, as I got older, I found out that she literally used to buy this from like a guy in the back of his BMW. He'd pop the trunk and then sell this stuff. And when you looked at the tags, it was Hanes, like a Hanes uh, T-shirt. But then it was like all Nike branding and stuff like that. So like uh-huh. that's when I was in high school. Nobody knew. Don't nobody, yeah, of course. No, kids didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was a kid and I, I didn't know any better. I didn't know until I got older and realized like, oh, Hanes doesn't make the shirts for well, Nike. I was, ra- <laughs> I was raised on that shit, bro. My, remember, my parents are Sicilian. So, you know, they were poor. Tampa so. Bay wasn't the Super Bowl yeah, champions. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. That was my mom's favorite thing to do. Her favorite thing to do was to find the knockoff shit. She'd be like, "Oh, it, oh, you my like gr- my grandma? She oh, you at- like Cheerios? Don't worry, Furios. They're really good too. Furios. They taste the same or whatever, right? <laughs> no, my like, grandma no, was the my ones. grandma Furios. was the exact same way. She almost like was competitive about it. Like she was all about. I mean. 
to a fault, to an embarrassing fault too, right? Mm. I think I told you guys. Yeah, this but you got to respect it though. I know. <laughs> My grandma, I'll never forget this. We were in, of, we were in like Marshalls, right? Which is already discounted <laughs> shit as it is, right? So you get like brands like Guess when that was popular when I was a kid. Yeah. And I went. My grandma would take me shopping, so I'm all excited. And she would go and she would take like the stickers off of like a. a oh, she was gangster uh, like. Oh, that. she would take the sticker uh, price and put it on the other ones, and then when we get up there and they would go like, oh no, that's like sixty dollars. She's like, no, it's not. And she would like get loud. And cry, oh my god, bro. <laughs> It was so embarrassing, and but uh, to, you know, at least five five out of ten times they would just go, okay, okay, okay. wow, and just give it to her, and then some. No, people my grandfather, go, my grandfather, who like he was like you know fresh off the boat, like, and he obviously he grew up very very poor. We'd go to the grocery store a couple times. I took him grocery shopping, and he'd buy vegetables or whatever, which used to always piss him off because he grows his own. So he's like he'd hate that he have to buy certain ones. Why? Why doesn't your grandma just want to eat what I grill? I got to grab whatever. You've told me this. He cuts oh, the stems no, off, right? Bro, we were buying. I don't remember what we were buying. We were buying. I don't remember what, what vegetable it was. And I put him in the bag, and he goes, "Whoa, what are you doing?" And he takes it out of the bag, and he pulls out a fucking pair of like scissors out of his pocket <laughs> that he carries, and he's yeah. cutting the the stems off. I'm like, "What are you doing, no, no?" <laughs> And he goes, I'm not paying for the stem. You know, you get to wear it. You know, they weigh it. Yeah, what a yeah. waste. Maybe we just save like five cents. <laughs> uh, uh, dude. Yeah, I didn't think it, I, <clears throat> I didn't think anything of it too. Growing up, like my mom would take it. It's this place called the Bargain Barn, right? And uh, like she always prided herself on being thrifty, but really, like now that I'd really, like, we were poor. Like I, I didn't even realize yeah. it, but she would like they would you know work their way around it, and so we're we're paying for everything by the pound. You know, so you get in there and you just there's just you just rummage through all this trash and shit. You know. <laughs> Like I'm like finding all like these toys and things and like you know you're trying to like make weight so you're like cutting some of it out but yeah dude I I had no idea like that was like not a thing dude I used to go with my dad to to work sometimes I'd help him work and then my favorite thing was to go to the dump with him after work because if he did a a job or he tore down stuff yeah we'd go to the dump you know why I used to like going to the dump mm. I'd always find something cool. At the dump, I would yeah. always. I found a Ninja Star one time at the dump. Sick. <laughs> another, another, I, I mean, I swear to God, I found a, a mini bike. I found that, a syringe. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, some drugs were still left it. in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I tried oh it God. out. <laughs> oh, whoa. Uh, I can feel that. Uh, no, I, we got a mini bike one time there at the at the dump. My dad got no it. He's like, I could fix this. We took it home, fixed it, rode around. Sick. Oh, yeah. It's a good time. You dude. know, my I had I dated this girl. Her dad was like all about like fixing stuff of like that. He used to. So you hit in San Jose, you guys should be aware of this. Like once a year, there's a, a time where you can you can throw out like your big appliances that are broken or like that and the city will come pick it up. It's like, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what the day is. I know what you're talking about. Right? And yeah. then you, you you see all kinds of washers and dryers and barbecue pits and just all broken yeah. down like big pieces that people don't want to haul off to the dump and pay. The city will come pick it up. Well, he like schedules that day to go around town and like look at swoop up. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I had just bought my con come up I had just bought my condo uh, like so I'm 20 something years old real young and I'm dating this girl and her dad does this and I was like, oh, I need to get a barbecue. But, you know, I'm like living to paycheck, paycheck. So I can't afford to get a barbecue yet till the next paycheck. And he's like, oh, no, no, I'll, I'll take care of you. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. I'll, I'll get it next. Shows up with this barbecue pit and then like it works fine. I'm like, where did you get this? And then he tells me. Someone like, tried to throw it yeah. away. Yes, yeah, someone tried to throw it away. All I had to do was a, a $5 part that he had so, to fix and then got it up and You know running. that that's big business now, right? Yeah. So it, people go on, I mean, Craigslist or whatever now. And they'll, there's always people giving away stuff for free. If you to come pick it up, oh, I'll give yeah. it to you. Yeah. And what people do, and this is like a big hustle now, mm -hmm. and it actually people can make money doing this. Yeah. They'll get free stuff, and then they'll sell it again on Craigslist for a little bit of money. Yeah. It's incredible. They'll come with their truck and their trailer and all. And I, I kind of ran into this because they'll you'll agree on a price, and then they'll come in and be like, oh, I got this much cash, you know, and like, and then they try and like hardball you, and I'm like, well, you obviously didn't bring enough. You know, yeah. like, well, I have the truck here, you know, like, we can take care of this now. I'm like, well, you're going to have to drive back. Uh, <laughs> and he's just like, what? Because that hustle always works for him. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know? I'm so, I'm so expedient. Like, when I want to get yeah, rid of something. Yeah, you would get me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, man. you would get me too. Now, you Jessica, know, she's that, like. That's a principal thing for me, dude. We agreed on that. And then go no, fuck No, yourself. Jessica will literally sell something for dollars. Like, literally. I'll be like, what happened to the whatever? Oh, I sold it for $5. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you made five bucks? Okay, cool. But I don't, I'm so expedient. I'm like. 
I mean, Gary, Gary I, this is how I found Gary V. Gary V was like, is the master at this with like, um, yeah, he's great. Garage sales. Yeah. Because so many people have no idea the value of some of their junk yeah. that they've had. You uh, can always make money. That's what I love about that approach. You know, he, he just finds a way. Like, I'll, it was, I'll hustle these and it, I'll make money. It was so brilliant how he even showed people. He walks over to these garage sales, literally looks up on eBay on his phone what they sell for, wheels and deals. You know, three dollar margin for himself, and then you know does that all day long, collects, and then at the end of the day, he's got you know, you know, twenty different pieces of 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 things that he's purchased that he could sell for three to five dollars more like than immediately one. resells it. Yes, doesn't do anything to it. Thanks so much. Take care, guys. Bye bye. All right, just picked up this uh, 1996 vintage Yankees mug, World Champs. Uh, picked up two for five bucks. She wanted four each. She didn't get it. Have yeah. you guys ever seen the where they have like uh, storage units? Yeah, and yeah. somebody storage or, wars. Yeah. yeah. So what's the deal with that? So people that just abandon so it. So what happens is after so and you sign this when you sign off when you get a storage unit. Like uh, if you don't pay your bill, I I don't remember. I think I want to say it's sixty or ninety days afterwards. They'll they'll cut the lock on it and put their own lock on it. So you lost your you lost whatever's in there at that point. So if you don't pay your bill for now, so, how do they sell? Do they sell the things in their piecemeal? No, or do they, no. Do they so what they do, surprise. they sell the lock. They so basically they they lock it up and then they would they have these like uh, auctions where they auction off the way they do it. They raise it up, but they don't let you go through it. They can't. You can't go through it. No one can walk in. You can look. You can look from the outside yeah, all you want. Do the people that own it look first and grab all the good shit? No, I don't. I don't. Well, I can't speak for every storage unit. Yeah, I mean, because I, mean, I would. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you <laughs> yeah, bought, I mean, <laughs> it's like there's gold bars in here. Dude. Yeah. Fuck all. I'm that. sure. I'm that. sure every storage unit has their own policy. Like, I mean, we've talked about investing in a storage unit before, right? If we had our own, we would right. definitely rummage mm -hmm. through it ourselves or pay someone to do that for us. You know. Yeah. But I think these big companies Get all the good stuff first have like kind of a standard process and what that looks like according to the show. Like if you watch, I like, I love that show. Like. Do you really? Oh yeah, I love uh, that show. I've never seen it, but I, I saw oh, I watch it. I used to watch it all the time. I love that show. 220, 220, 220, going twice. Gotta go against wide and Dead man walking. Fair warning tonight. It's not like you wait here. You got it for two tan. Oh yeah. Holy yeah, western scene. And their side. Oh yeah, baby. All together for all 50 prints, signed by the artist. You have a total of. $20,500. 20 grand. Sometimes I even amaze myself. So they, yeah, they, they, they raise it up. They have X amount of minutes for everybody to kind of peek at it. And then they close it back down and then the bidding starts. Yeah. And then they just they auction it off and then you go through it and it's, but that's gambling, right? Cause oh, totally. a lot of times people, these, these guys and, and girls that go around. Yeah, and Cause do, sometimes it might look like yeah, the stuff on the nothing. front looks like shit, but there may be something expensive. And right. Yeah. That's when you get a gold mine though. But a lot of times these, they, jets they overbid there. cause they see something, Oh, they have a nice, this, a nice, that. And then there's tons of boxes. Maybe they have really nice stuff and then they, it drives up. And then they end up getting dog shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Too bad you don't, the uh, x-ray glasses don't exist, huh? Because then you can see what's going on. <laughs> I, mean, I, I believed did. in that, though, when Dude, I was a kid. did you ever order the x-ray? <laughs> yeah, of course. They had, like, the little circles. Yes. Yeah. Fucking rip Didn't off. do anything. Did you ever see that? No, I didn't. That and the sea monkeys. Come yes, on. dude. You know what I did have, though, that I thought I mean, was so cool, and I probably wore them for like a good year or two as a kid? You remember the kind of, they're like almost like a rectangle like frames, and they had mirrors. On, on the, the sides? On the sides. So you can see behind you? <laughs> yes. I thought that was so cool. Yeah. Do you guys remember those? Oh, dude, all the little spy stuff, dude. Do you, 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 you watch someone behind you? I yeah. have no idea. They had no value whatsoever, and I don't think I have any functional reason why I think I wore them. Hey, I just did thought you, it was so cool. Did you, and be honest. <laughs> so I could be like this, looking the other way, yeah, and someone I, like, talking to me, like, I know what you're doing. hold up your hands. Four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew that, man. So, I totally so see you. you never got x-ray glasses, because when you read comic books in the back, it was always- I wasn't a big comic book reader. Oh, I was a Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of, oh yeah. yeah. No, I was, and yeah. I was. Of course, I got them so I could see people's bones. Yeah. Right. I was into like sports. It wasn't and to girls, look at people naked. Things. Yeah, not at all. There, it wasn't advertised like that either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, and literally, <laughs> some they'll show you a picture like, <laughs> getting no, ready. That's how they'd sell it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. in dude. comic books. Totally, yes. Bro. No, they did not. Yes, yes they would. Dude. Hey, get it'd be some lady you'd see her bra or everything. No way. Yeah. So you're in a kid's comic book. That's how they sold. Yeah. You're 13 year old kid. I'm like, you're like, dude. I'm getting this. I mean, it's like Punisher War Journal. That's not how X-rays work, by the way. That's kind of brilliant actually i did not know they did that yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. it was always bullshit exploited us they can't get away with that now though right 
Um, I don't I, know. They get away with yeah. a lot of crazy stuff yeah. these days. Now I have an. I now I have a question for you, Adam. Mm. To be honest, too. Mm. Did you ever wear the glasses that they they were just like a bunch of lines? You know what I'm talking about? No. Like they were. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Well, Justin has it in some of his. videos. Yeah, I had some of those. Yeah, those, so stupid. Yeah, it was like, um, what was it? A deep Deep Space Nine, the Star Trek, where it had the guy from Reading Rainbow that had those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, or uh, I think Big came, Trouble in Little China. Kanye made those uh, popular again. Did he? I, I thought it came from like a music video back in the eighties. That's what I think it came from. I, I re, all I remember I is Kanye. one of the kung fu gangs in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. One of the greatest movies of all time, by the way. Yes. One of them, there was a guy in there that wore them. Mm. Remember when in the beginning when they go kidnap the girl, the Asian girl with the green eyes because they're so rare. That was a thing. Yeah. Uh, and and then they're like they they kidnapped her and they're driving away. One of the thugs that was just like you know the the the, the kung fu. Guy. Bro, can I just tell you what a great movie? When's the last yeah. time you guys watched that? By the way, long time ago. So good. Every dude. time I'm sick, that's which hasn't been very very much ever. Bro, but. that's when Right In became a thing. It was yeah. before Mortal Kombat didn't have Right In. That came from there, dude. Yeah, no, you know what? We have, no one's been sick here in a while, huh? Dude, it's been we? years since I've been sick. Yeah, what are you trying to jinx us? I'm not, I'm not. What I'm not. What do you think that is? Now, have you always been that way? I, when we, when I worked in the gym, I was I was sick. It's because like, who are you around, dude? Be honest. Not that many people anymore, right? Yeah. Have you been around a lot of people? Mm. Mm. No. Th that's part of it for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Like it's just healthier habits. I think. I think I'm more conscious of that now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, Every, you're supplementing. I'm supposed to be doing. Well, yeah. now I finally have you guys taking vitamin D regularly after we put it in here. I, the someone just asked me that on my uh, stories. I'm getting a lot more sun. I'm being what way, way more supplements I take regularly. That's about the only supplement I take like, every day. Vitamin mm -hmm. D. Yeah, you know it's made it's 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 a rotation now, consistent for me. Hmm. Actually, you were telling me because you saw me take a bunch uh, the other day. Uh, every day I use the magnesium, the mellow. Yeah, magnesium. I use it every single day. Now. I am now right now. So yeah. I I'm still waiting for what I think my body's going to adapt to it and not see the same results from it. And it hasn't happened. I, I drink that almost every single night well, right now. Well, because we're so deficient, right, in magnesium. I, I imagine that, like, taking it more frequently is probably a good thing anyways. Well, so that's kind of how I've decided. I'm like, well, my body's probably lacking in it is why. Because I'm sure, like, so Katrina takes it. And she's like, oh, yeah, I felt like I... But she doesn't feel like I feel it. I feel it like... And she's, yeah. she sees it in me. She's like, like, I'll go to drink that. She's like, oh, I'm not getting any tonight. You know, she, <laughs> she like she knows right. Yeah, two mellow. She's yeah, like, yeah. Shakes you. Yo, know. she like if I drink it and I'm in bed, lights out, and everything like Good that. Night. Thirty minutes, I am definitely wow. out hard, and I'm it's it's crazy how well. It, but I have done this, where I'm drinking it, and yeah, it kind of mellows me out. But then I watch TV and I'm doing stuff like that. Then it it doesn't work the same. It doesn't make you sleepy. It just no. makes you chill. Yeah, is what it does. Um, no, I use it regularly, and and now I have always not always. I'm sorry for a long time. I've used magnesium supplements. Very different. So I used to use the popular magnesium brands that you scoop into your water and you mix it and it fizzes and whatever. And from what I learned, your body does a shitty job. It doesn't absorb it very well. It's basically mm. a laxative. That's what you're taking when you do it that way. Uh, the 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 magnesium that's in mellow, apparently I'm absorbing because I can actually feel it. Even though I've always supplemented, or I should say for a long time supplemented yeah. with magnesium. I've been doing that too. And, and zinc was another one that I've been pretty – frequent with as well and I, I felt like that made a difference i yeah. must have been deficient the last time somebody was sick was me right last year i would say yeah that's the last time i remember uh -huh. you're the last one i remember yeah, you, we thought you had the vid dude i and, and he didn't i maybe or i maybe? think i still did yeah i don't know I that that whole testing thing was a little weird it was weird we did a kind of an experimental test so but i i feel like yeah I it's it. just i was like why are they doing this rectally i have no idea <laughs> nobody else is doing this. <laughs> how they do it in china yeah. 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 the source right <laughs> so whatever keep yeah. testing me why do you got to keep doing that yeah. uh, is it only once enough? Why, why so frequent yeah this, yeah. Is, this is all weird can we can we better and accurate can we talk and speculate on this potential business venture that we might do i know doug hates when we do things like this but i think that i would before it's finished and created i one i think it would be neat to hear feedback um from our audience but so anyway we have a partner nci who we love you know jason phillips yeah. and his company they've been working with yeah, online coach certification that's right and we have we have a, a good portion of our audience are, are coaches and trainers or people that are aspiring to be coaches mm -hmm. and trainers maybe one of the most common dms i get is questions around that we've got to a place now and by the way too like I saw somebody on, I think Justin's page or something that was frustrated because they didn't get an answer from one of us and they DM'd us. Uh, on average, I know- I every, get the angry ones. I know. Right? Yeah. On average, we get 150 to 200 DMs every single day. We do our best to try and answer as many as possible. We have a customer service team 
but their job is to handle people like you in case you can't get through to one of us. So mm-hmm. uh, we made that promise a long time ago that we would try and answer everybody's question personally. It's just it got, not feasible. It's though. not. It's not. It's impossible. And we still try anyways. Yeah. But if you ever need anything, you go to info info at mindpumpmedia.com. You can email them. Adam always answers the nude photos, though. So if you send <laughs> yeah, a nude yeah, photo to yeah, Adam, yeah, helps. that's yeah. for the guys. Yeah. So, always answers them. So anyways, we get lots of questions around uh, trainers, and I've had people offer me money to talk to me on the phone for a half hour, hour to, to look at their business, to help them out with this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, we've been trying to f- figure out a way that how we could help that community um, but also be efficient with our time. And so it was actually Jason Jason Phillips who uh, proposed this idea that we do something because he's getting so much good feedback. Because yeah, he does a lot of these where they, they coach coaches on how to build, set up their business, build their business, take mm-hmm. it to the next level. A lot of people like it quite a bit. Uh, he does a good job. And so we may be doing something like that with him. Right. In the yeah. Future, well, which, and the, and which team, is really teaming up a bit. It's really as a way to give back to the trainer community because at, at, at our core, that's what we are. I mean, I know we, we you know us as Mind Pump uh, and podcast hosts and all that stuff, but it, we're trainers. That's what we did. That's what we started with. So we did for a long time. Yeah. That's our heart. For and sure. that's, yeah. And so other trainers are always, always going to be very special to us. And I think the way it's shaping up is that. You know, every week there'll be a call with Jason and one of us and, you know, we'll cover everything on the every, every aspect of, you know, building a, a business around coaching and training from virtual to in-person. A very specific topic and then some Q&A uh, added in there Yeah, well. that, that the people that will be a part of this group will have access, direct access every single week mm-hmm. to Jason and one of us to be able to do that. And our big thing was like, listen, if we're going to do something like this, it has to be tremendous value. Like mm-hmm. it's not going to be something that's super expensive for everybody like these crazy ass you know, mastermind groups, 50 grand a year for you to do this. Like the idea is to make it very, very feasible for literally anybody and everybody that is extremely valuable. Yeah. And extremely valuable. So it doesn't feel like speaking of which, did you see the offer? So they have an offer. We're going to rent a Rolls Royce. So they they actually have an offer (laughs) right now for trainers. So it's, uh, if you go to them, NCI certifications.com forward slash mind pump, you get a free masterclass plus 50% off your next class or course. Uh, through the end of the month, so that's that's their current promotion. So yeah. really, what they do is they, they do certifications and courses for online coaches to educate them and make it's a them great resource. Better. Doug, I texted you a link. I'd like you to pull something up. This is a m- incredible technology. This is night vision technology now that the military is is using, or at least what they're showing us that they have. Yeah, this shit's crazy, bro. Look at this. Can you buy it? This is how they'll see at night. What? So, yes. So, not only is there a video, Doug, you could play, or is it just that? How does right it there? line them so perfectly like that? It, the technology does that. So, there, I think there's a video that shows what it looks like. Yeah, click, click play there. Whoa. Watch this. What? Look at that, dude. So, this is pitch looks black. Like a video game. This is pitch black. And it literally outlines people and shows you wow. where they are, where they're moving. Wow. Oh, dude. Look at that. Isn't that crazy technology? You can't hide anymore. Dude, that's wild to me. Yeah. That wow. is so so you're fighting at night in the pitch black and you could clearly see like it like probably better than daytime yeah. with something like that. Wow, that's, that's way cool. Isn't that yeah. wild? So that's the latest. Can we can we buy a pair of those? I know we should. I'm serious. Probably I'm, not. I'm dead serious. You right can now. get regular night vision, but I don't think you can get that. So Let's that's look at the, the name of Doug. Let's look it up. It's called. This the, would be a really good mind pump investment. It's called the ENVG B. <laughs> yeah. So I'm giving me a hard time. Can get it on Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. Can't. Yes, even get it. No, I'm serious. <laughs> People yeah, yeah. hiding in a bush. It, we'll Spe- just take it out of Justin's pay. Speaking of which, okay. Doug, maybe you can Google this. Uh, actually, I'll send you a link to it because I want the boys to see this. Have you guys seen uh, the new Air Force One that they're going to start building? The sneakers. No, Air Force. <laughs> the the plane. So, so uh, dumb. Yeah. The Air Force the Air Force One You're for so you know th- that the president flies in. Yeah. Because you know they've been flying for a long time in the same, what is it, 740? How long have they had the same, yeah, plane? Yeah. I mean, it's all got crazy tech in it and stuff. Right. But it's just a regular Boeing, you know. Yeah, always you would think that the president would be rolling around in like something that's like super like Well, Doug, I just sent you a link. Missiles for it. and badass tactical well, shit on it, make right? Make no mistake, inside the current Air Force One is probably ridiculous technology yeah. and they have jets that are near it and all that stuff. Well, it's but, more, yeah, like computers and servers and all that stuff, I'm sure. So like you check his email. Yeah, yeah all that kind so, of stuff. Okay, look at this new Air Force <laughs> yeah. One. This new Air Force, is there a picture of it right there? It's going to be supersonic. That's sick. It's going to be fa- it's going to be a supersonic Air Force One, so it'll be faster than any Air Force One that we've ever made. 
And they hey, just hey, our good. There's our tax money. Yeah. Let's see it, Doug. Let's see what <laughs> yeah. we let's see what we bought, bro. That's 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 like a fraction of your tax money. Well, I know yeah. it's another Most, great place it's going though. Yeah, I mean, at more. least use it for something cool. Yeah, yeah. But, but, <laughs> that's what I feel like if you're gonna take yeah. my money, at least build cool shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 get some death rays or something. So this thing goes. It's, so it's supersonic, right? But one of the problems with supersonic what, jets. Yeah, what, what what's uh, supersonic mean? Remember that song? Super Sonic. Super Sonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it go Mach 1? No, it, it goes faster than the speed of sound, right? Wow. So so, so it, it goes fast. It's Mach 1? Uh, it's going to be Mach 1 or maybe even Mach 2. But it, Twice the speed of sound. Oh, uh, Mach 2. Wow. Okay. Now, is that, is that okay, I don't have I don't know what that means. Is that the definition? <laughs> I'm trying to get it clear. I can't be alone He's a here. wow. What does we're, that mean? Yeah, yeah. Remember, we're not no, no, no. scientists. No, no, no. I think so, 600 and something miles so an hour. So super, what is the definition of supersonic? Faster than the speed of sound. Okay. Okay, so speed That's, of sound is, what is it, 626 miles an hour or something like that, Doug? Maybe you can look it up. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Look up speed of sound. And I believe, 761 uh, miles 761. an hour. 761. So Mach 2 is twice as fast. So two so, times. So that this speed. thing can go fourteen hundred miles an hour. Maybe, apparently. Wow. Now here's the cool thing about this is that when you go faster than the speed of sound, you create a sonic boom, which is very loud. Sonic boom. Right. It's very loud. And people on the ground can hear it. It's not good. Well, they've designed this jet to not create sonic booms, even though it breaks through the aerodynamics. Something. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Well, what? So when are they going to make one that can go outside our atmosphere? You uh, know, for uh, the whole Space Force thing. I don't know. See, 1,500 know. miles an hour, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Now, I imagine, like, it ha it'll it have that capability, but they'll probably cruise yeah. most of the time, right? Yeah, I mean, dude. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to be, you know, flexing like that all the time. Imagine the gas. <laughs> they just want to have the capability so they can, What's gas you know, they use to do yeah, this? They, they take yeah. some diplomats up there, like, dude, check this out. <laughs> 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 I heard some crazy Whoa. stat on this, like a Ferrari in, 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 in 1977. So if you did a Ferrari in 1977 and then uh, 1997 and then 2017, the, how fast it is in, in a- in a Bro, uh, they weren't even that fast. Zero to then. 60. So zero to 60, 1977 was- Like six eight, seconds eight, or eight, so. eight point four seconds. <laughs> And then it was a dog. And then ninety seven it goes to uh four point six or six yeah, four point six seconds somewhere around there. And then uh two thousand seventeen down to two point I think two point nine or Damn. two. Bro, cars are, cars are so fast now. Damn. When I was a kid, if you got a car that was two hundred horsepower, it was mm -hmm. like, dude, this is a fucking fast yeah, car. Yeah. Bro, minivans, 200 miles uh, horsepower now. It's yeah. like nothing. Yeah, that statistic was in this book that I'm reading right now, and he brings up this point. He's like, imagine the guys that built the 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 Ferrari in uh, 1997. If you told them that you would be able to get that Ferrari to go from you know the six seconds uh, zero to sixty from four seconds down to two point nine, they look at you as it's impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And definitely the guys in 1977 would be like, no way, that's even possible. So to try and fathom where will it be 20 years from now? You know, there were theory you need a flex capacitor. Yeah. That's you know, what you know missing. there were there yeah. were there were scientists that when they built trains that went faster than horses, mm -hmm. there were scientists that actually petitioned and said, "Don't do this. You're gonna people's gonna melt and weird shit's gonna happen. <laughs> you're not supposed to go that like fast." The G forces. Is that gonna, true? Yeah. They're oh, that's bad. Yeah, everybody was like, off. "You're not supposed to do that." That's I mean, crazy. it felt like that. Dude. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. And like, the, being on those fighter jets, I was like, "Oh my god, my internal organs and my skin's like melting." Yeah. Well, that's a fighter jet, bro. These were trains yeah. that went like 50 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different. You know what I mean? That's funny. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Every time they invent something like that, everybody freaks out. But what's the next thing gonna be? You know? Well, see, and I hear that, then I then you guys get all weird Time when, they, when they're you know making a, a monkey slash human and think that's, that's all way different than going fast. <laughs> oh, yeah that is there's no reason to do that that is what we're concerned well i about. bet you people back then that there was no reason to go 50 miles an hour like who is in that much of a hurry that's true they need to go 50 miles an hour yeah, i get that you know dude. but leave a, 10 minutes early but a monkey human say. bro come on so i mean their their rationale is that they're gonna like harvest organs from it is is what i heard yes that's what the, the that's the same thing and, and there's 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 your rationale no 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 yeah it, like that's that's so oh, we're, twisted we're and so many nature. different. Yeah. yeah. Why don't they do this? Okay. You're just so, keep riding horses. No. Well, why don't you just <laughs> make a heart in the lab? Why you got to grow in a monkey? Fuck. Yeah. Well, you know? I'm sure there's some there's some logical reason why that is done in a monkey. It's because it's probably the closest thing. Oh, to now it. you're yeah. a sign. All of a sudden, yeah. you're no. A science guy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Dude, whoa. you know what I think? I, I think this whole thing with robots is is a farce. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, because like you know how all these movies <laughs> are like, are oh, fake. robots, you. Know, we're never going to get that far with robots. We're going to get a lot further with human beings. We're just going to integrate it all within human beings. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Who yeah. had the meme that had the, the robot that ate the girl's hair? I did. It was, <laughs> a, it 
it was a robot. <laughs> yeah. Like look at robots. They're all like zzz, zzz, clunky. I mean, I, I follow that I follow that one page. Hey, like, what's how do they move? <laughs> oh my god. So accurate. Yeah, it's I mean, some of them are pretty creepy, you know, like Boston Dynamics is, is one of those pages I follow all the time and they show like some progress with some yeah. of them where, where they can actually like dance and, and you know figure things out, but they're still just I'm, I'm like No, no. you I'm with you. I, I 100% believe that we're going to see that. That's most likely is people that, I mean, we're already- Human already, robot hybrids. Well, there's already people that do all the, you know, biohacking stuff to increase their sound, we're their vision. We're already perfected. Have you all got, you got to do is add stuff to ha, us. Have you guys seen these backyard, uh, sorry, not backyard, garage scientists? Okay, so- CRISPR technology dudes? Bro, yeah, bro, yeah. Because, uh, because you can get a lot of these, this technology and chemicals- What is wrong with people? Yeah. Through a gray market and, and you say can, it's- And you could YouTube it. You know, Dude, these guys, these guys are experimenting on themselves, doing weird shit. It's like shit. bioluminescent stuff. They're injecting their eyes and yeah, like dude. weird shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm down. I'm cool. That's fine. Do that yourself. <laughs> but it does, it's your body, right? Go for it. I, I just, it just I mean, feels the truth like a comic is, book. I mean, that's let's crazy. be honest. So that's probably how we're going to have a breakthrough in that is someone who has the balls to do weird shit like that. It, we break, I mean, this is kind of a crazy you know, analogy or parallel to draw here, but bodybuilders, yeah. I mean, they, how much they progressed weight training because they had the balls well, to do. You, you think crazy. we'll be able to? Okay, what's what's the first breakthrough you think is going to come out? Something like that. Like, what if like we could regrow limbs, just like uh, lizards? Yeah, that's the that's how lizard fucking man in Spider Man was made. By exactly. The way. That's exactly how he's made. It's it's, hmm? it's in the. Comic he was a books. guy. He was an amputee. Oh, in the comics. In the comics, and then he he wanted to <laughs> figure we're, out how to grow back. In comics is yeah. like reality. I mean, you guys, <laughs> hey, it's real. A lot we of got sh- human uh, monkey hybrids. Come on, uh, dude. It's all up in the air now. Got to start going back to these comics that yeah. they had all laid out. No, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. It's gonna be really interesting what people are gonna do to their bodies and what are they gonna come out with? I don't know. It's gonna be kind of cool. But I, yeah, but I, you know, self experimentation is. I mean, that's science. That's how the first vaccine was developed. You guys know that, right? Yeah. The first vaccine was the scientists who saw that cowpox was similar to smallpox, took some of it and and created a vaccine. Actually, tested it on his son and himself, mm. and then discovered that a vaccine works and then that was it mm. experimented on his kid that's kind of wow. fucked up though huh yeah what if it didn't work yeah <laughs> but you're right i mean you see i think we're gonna see like the chip in the brain real soon here i think what we're one of the things we're closest oh, to yeah. that i think is going to be the most revolutionary out of everything out of all the things we're talking about is literally the ability to google search and get the information that you have in your phone but just uh, by thinking the, it. Oh, that, that'll be more yeah. that'll be more than revolutionary that'll be that's what i'm saying i think that uh, that will disrupt more than anything else that'll disrupt everything i feel like there's gonna be a lot of people's brains like just melting no you know, okay. once you tap into okay that. i think that'll be the worst fucking thing we could do D- like uh, really? be the think, worst. think about how inundated you already are with no. with just stimulus all day no, long no, no. and then it, to have that it's would be the like, worst Ugh. possible thing you could do it, it, it will destroy humanity i'll tell you why okay we have, I think that we now know for sure that knowing shit just doesn't make humans act better. Just because we know stuff doesn't make us wiser yeah. because we have access to all this information and there's now people, there are groups of people that still believe that earth is flat more now than the war 30 years ago, right? Yeah. So you want to have access, instant access to the information, to the internet with your brain? You know how crazy and weird shit's going to get? It's like equal parts, like good information with disinformation like I mean, at it's, the same time. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's it's that far different than now. The only difference you have to act very different bro you think so yes you know the, the bottleneck with your with your hand and the phone is very <laughs> like, different like that's a massive bottleneck like, it is oh my god my phone is so far i don't want to fucking search google One, two, three. yeah it's not the same when you can think it okay when you think of a thought and you connect abstract ideas in your brain you have no idea how complex that is well i envision it to be an on and off switch too because you mm. that could be torturous to be stuck in the the web all the time like you would never want to just i wouldn't want to have a conversation with you and as we're having like a fun you know debate all this information is being fired at me. UI looks like like how does that work do you close your eyes and then you know you're that's you're, why i think there's an on and off switch i feel like it's that it's that it's like i can i can just switch it off i mean you on. make a good point like what what the hell would that look like without driving you crazy yeah right? you'd have to you have an on and off switch have to be like, some, you like, would some want, kind of interface like you, you need like some kind of glasses or something to you push to, your nose. <laughs> you, put, you, you, put, you put you push your nose. You push your I dream a genie. You push no, your, that's bewitched. Oh, yeah. it's bewitched. Yeah, it's right. You push your nose and then it turns on the the, the software. <laughs> you have to fart. Yeah. You know, so I, oh, you know, oh, oh shit! I turned it on an accident. I think we really solved. This I don't know. I don't think guys. we're far from that though. I think that's we're the 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 closest to doing something crazy. Like I think the first thing we're gonna see is gonna be uh, implants in your eyes. That's what I think. I think that already happens. No, no, no. I think not. Not what I'm what I'm saying is I think that the, the very first 
thing uh, we're gonna see the Black Mirror episode where you like zoom with one. Yeah, eye. Yeah, where you literally can like you or have like, like a ridiculous camera. They're just tempting Google glasses like that. Yeah, but it's but it's a, like a either a lens or like a so contact bionic lens. eye. Yeah, so you could just see like hella far away or whatever. Speaking of cameras, you know what I just realized about my iPhone? I told I shared this with Justin yesterday that. You know, your iPhone oh, no. is is set a lot of times on a default camera that saves your battery the most because obviously that's one of the biggest it's selling the lowest points. Lowest resolution, but there's like what it goes four X clear. Shut your face. Yes. Yeah. No. Go to your phone right. You have your phone that's right now. Go go to your camera. Our videos can be so. And much tell me. Okay, go in your camera. Open the camera. Open your camera. Look at the top right hand corner. What does it say? It didn't say anything. It was just a little dot or so whatever. Oh yeah, yours is really no camera, not is photo. Go to camera, like a like video, HD video camera. Go to video camera or something. Oh, oh, oh. Go, go to, to video, video camera, and what does it say top right? Oh, it says HD three zero. Bro, it goes to it goes three four Fuck! times. Fuck. Yes, yeah, it's a four K. Now look. Whoa. Now look around. No. Yes. That's weird. You isn't that funny? Well, because it eats up your battery, right? Is yeah. That the reason? Well, and because of course. Oh my god, I'm so annoyed. I didn't know that. Right. I know. Why That's didn't anybody tell me? So, this well, one of the saying. selling points for phones, like one of the number one selling points, is its battery life. Like at least with the smartphones today, because you know, the, obviously, the more power they're using, the more power they need to do these things, they suck. Dude, it made a huge difference every time I clicked it. Yeah. That's annoying. I haven't always videos it's, I have my son. So that clear. I, know. I know. I know. I just I just found that out the other day. Well, and the way I found out was. Katrina had hers obviously on the higher resolution, and I grab and I know that I have a newer model. So I, she's got the older model. Mm -hmm. I grab it, and I'm like, "Why does your camera look so much better than mine? I have a better phone. It doesn't make sense." Mm -hmm. yeah. And I look at it, and I'm like, "So then I go to the default. And I go look up the. I pull up in your settings. So that's where you go. You go in your settings. Go to camera, and it shows where it, it, your default uh, video camera settings. And they have it like on the second one. It goes like six levels." Yeah. All the way to wow. 4K, 4K 60. Wow, that's annoying. We've, right? we've been missing out yeah. this whole time. I just found that out. So there's a little plug for yeah. somebody. By, who's by done the, the way, same thing. did you know that sometimes you say grab instead of grab? Grab? Grab. Grab. I say grab. Grab. Yeah. Maga. So I, she's got the older model. Mm -hmm. I grab it. Yeah. Uh, so we say I grab it. You say I grab it. It sounds like you said a V. Did you know oh that? Oh, my God. I do a lot of stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. You don't even know, do you? Well, somebody asked hey. me if I was dyslexic, and I, and I, and I responded back. No they, no, they didn't. Yeah, no, they asked. But they did it in a very genuine, nice way. They're like, you know, my- Hey, do you have any learn you, you have they learning did, disability? They did. Right? They did. Well, they, and they said it like, they said, um, I have a very serious question, you know, like, do you have dyslexia? Because I have a son that does, and I want- and He wanted to- She said- It was actually like a compliment, right? Believe it or not. Like a backhanded one. It was like a shit sandwich, actually. She was like, you know, I wanted mm. to- Share with him some inspiring people. You've been that, so successful yes, despite your yes, yes, learning despite, disabilities. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that's, that's a serious obstacle, shit sandwich right there. Right, right, you right, faced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I I firmly believe that some of the most successful people are learn differently. Well, than most so people. coming coming from a mother who has a son who's, dys, who's dyslexic, she said that she's read a lot about it. And she says they're actually. There's there's some very very successful people because they've had to deal with that their whole life and they've overcame that adversity at a young age, and then they builds character. It mm -hmm. builds incredible character. So my answer to her was I've never been diagnosed with that or ADD. Although I speculate that I've I struggle with both. I mean because yeah. I read for somebody who reads as much as I read, I should be able to speak a lot better than what I. Oh, do. You, you're a very good communicator. That's not what well, I mean. Well, you just pronounce words weird. Yeah, sometimes. but that's yeah. a difference, right? I'm good at communicating, right, and 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 getting people to yeah. take a, a very a complex thing and then give it to them in a way that that's easy and digest, which you do that very well well yes but yeah. yeah as far as the words that i choose to put in there to get that huh? get to that no part. you do really well that's not mm -hmm. true i'll uh, say i'll say a word that you've never heard of before and i'll hear you say it in the next conversation and use it in context properly well just so you know yeah. that's also you just a, put flair that's uh, a on your words this is a skill that i think I, he just wants to be unique yeah I that's no, what i think now just I like your on. shoes no, it's, and, i trust you know me what i mean you're, you're i am not trying to pronounce things the wrong way it's a skill though what you just said that i've had i had to teach myself how to do so i and i remember doing i like vividly remember or you know actively making a conscious effort to do this when i would learn something I knew that I had to immediately go teach it, even though I'm totally you'll learn it better. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No yeah. matter no matter how green I am to learning it, this is what made me a, made me good at training. I knew very little coming in, but I was I was thirsty to learn, and I, I would always ask mm -hmm. people much smarter than me questions. They would tell me something immediately after that, even if it didn't fucking apply. I was a teaching it to the next mm -hmm. client. Because I knew that I had to do that if I was going to, to yeah, solidify. It sticks. Yeah. yeah, then it would stick. I think my theory is that people who think differently, and I, I, I know there's actual, you know, they call them disabilities, but I think oftentimes it's just you think differently. Mm -hmm. Innovation, uh, risk taking, 
uh, oftentimes that comes from places where you just see things differently. Mm-hmm. So everybody sees things a certain way. It's hard to innovate because everybody sees the problem the same. Then you get someone from the outside who without, they can't help but think outside the box because they yeah. think differently. Right. They have different ideas. And that's why I, you, that's why you see in studies, entrepreneurs actually have higher rates of some of these things like ADD, for example, I would I would bet you a million dollars that salespeople entrepreneurs probably a greater percentage of them yeah. have ADD than people who who don't. Well, I think for me it's it's maybe even simpler. Like just everything has been hard for me <laughs> my whole life. Like yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've I've had not, to work for which everything. is also why I always get really like what is one of the things that drives me crazy? Someone tries to pull like the white privilege card on me and stuff like that. Oh, it's yeah. like that drives me crazy because my whole life has been riddled with adversity. Yeah. Is there people out there that have it worse? Well, just immediately yes, devalues there is. all the work. But nothing has yeah. come easy to me. Yeah. Not sports, not learning, not anything I've ever done came easy to me. I always had to work at it. But yeah. I'm extremely grateful for that. You were just attractive. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, that is not no, true no, either. No, no. You hey, had handsome hey, privilege. Hey, I, you're yeah. still attractive. I don't yeah. care what you say. <laughs> yeah. Attractive. No. Yeah, you are, bro. No. You're on camera. Everybody can see it. Maybe, hey, maybe half way today maybe today like because i worked i worked hard at that you know what i'm saying i had to fucking hey, you always dated hot girls yes or no personality though what? attractive that's what i mean by attractive, attractive. personality yeah. yeah okay i'll take that so yeah. i you know for sure like in school you know I, I think i've shared that before right damn it's working what he's doing right now i see what he's doing he's making me give him compliments yeah, yeah, yeah damn yeah, yeah. you got sucked well in, hey when i was in high school i, I was a 130 pounds at six foot something right shredded i had not shredded <laughs> rib ribs sticking out like this right you know bony elbow and stuff uh, like that skinny arms right and i uh had both my front two teeth were completely crooked yeah i saw a picture and, and turned in you know, I did my family didn't have money, so I was wearing knockoff clothes. Yeah, you know, yeah. I drove a piece of shit car when I finally could drive. This is like my life story. But yeah. you know, I I also uh, I was comfortable with making fun of myself because in high school, I mean, everybody you're going to get teased, mm-hmm. and if yeah, you, it's just true, it doesn't matter what. Yeah, you look like. you're going to get. And I went through teasing, bullying, all that stuff like that, and I just I learned to laugh at myself. I couldn't do anything about those things, right? I didn't have the money to go get braces. I didn't have couldn't change the way I dressed. In fact, that's actually what made me the guy who like wore unique and different stuff. So I started to create to my thrift own thrift store. Yeah, and I created my own too. style you know, because if good. I tried if I tried to fit in with everybody else, I would be made fun of more yeah. for trying. So I just I carved my own path. No, that's a great. You make you actually made a, a phenomenal point there. What a, a skill is to be able to learn it yourself. You know how important that is to laugh at yourself. Sorry. How important of a skill that is for people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very challenging, right? It's but a I think lost art. If you can laugh at yourself, uh, and you know, oh, that's funny. Oh yeah, you're, you know, I could see how I did that bad or whatever. You almost become invincible to like the challenges that people present you with because. Yeah. It's like, well, what are you going to say to me that I haven't well, said? What you you're do, not going to pile on somebody, you know. Mm-hmm. You, well, you don't give the gas that somebody who is okay. Somebody who's doing that is that's putting down somebody else. Is it, that's a reflection of themselves? They're insecure, yes, sure, and they're looking for instant gratification to put you down to yeah. give them that temporary feeling of feeling better about themselves. If you don't give that to them, it's, it it's, doesn't work. It, it doesn't. They move work. on to the they, next. That's person. right. They move on to the next target that will give to that. They, yes. give, they move on to the next weak person. This is what you learn growing up. Yeah, you got to go through that. You know, and I, that's. <laughs> I think I'm sorry, <laughs> but Justin, there's value. Just in that. like I taught so many kids. Yeah, lessons <laughs> doing well, this. Like, like, I'm just, so responsible for all these kids just bubble tape the whole thing man it's like otherwise we end up with everybody that's just so yeah. soft well it's just hard because not a lot of people i think i mean i don't think i this is also another thing that's good about being an older father like i fully grasp that as a 40 year old man yeah, now. Sure. i can i and i can i can communicate that to my son when that day comes yeah. if i was 25 i was still putting that together I was still growing through that and moving beyond those insecurities. So if I had a son who's going through it too, like you're just reactionary. No, you're right. You're right. Uh Being an insecure dad versus being a secure dad. What a difference. What a tremendous difference. Right. So now when, when those, those, and so you got to think of parents who have kids that are going through that, that are 22 years old and their kids getting picked on. They just want the school to intervene or they just want rules and laws to be put in place so that doesn't happen and let's put my kid in a bubble because they don't have the foresight to see that, oh, wow, actually this may develop their character. And if I as a parent can communicate this so they understand what they're doing. It's a discipline the parent has to apply. Right. Which is really hard to to convey. Because you have kids having kids, man. Yeah, exactly. And you teach kids how to handle and move through situations. It's like, uh, what is it? What's the, what do they say? Like, 
don't change the world for your kid because that's impossible. Mm. But get your kid to adapt to be able to you know to navigate the whatever comes so, their way. Yeah, so you make your child yes, tough, resilient. Right? Exactly. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free stuff. We got all kinds of free giveaways there. They cost nothing. Mindpumpfree. Dot com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from C. David Anthony. What are your thoughts on super slow training? Super slow training. Is there a franchise? Like is there a franchise that still exists that's around uh, this? I just remember the one that was off Silver Creek. Yes. But yeah. But uh, really, they actually have places that are. That yes, they do. Yeah, oh, they I just do that. super slow training. Kind yeah. of fascinating. As a young trainer, I used to shit on it. Really? You know? Yeah. As a young trainer, not kind of being aware of like how valuable that actually could be for somebody. Yeah. So they obviously targeted, you know, the older population. And that was the angle was they, they were explaining the, the importance of resistance training, but, and the safety of going super, super slow. Cause you use, and they have all these machines and they would literally do like a single rep that like took yeah 30 seconds or a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I actually read about, I didn't know that by the way, I read yeah. about this as a kid, like it was super into trying to build muscle. And I found all, anything I could read about building muscle, the history of building muscle, the science I would consume. And I, I read an article about super, they called it super slow motion training. And it started during World War II. Uh, mm. During World War II, it was very difficult to get iron. In fact, the government limited uh, how much iron you could buy for things like weights and whatever because they needed it for the war effort. So you had all these people that were lifting weights, not a ton, but enough to where they're like, what, can, what are we going to do? Our dumbbells now only go up to 30 pounds. We only have a few 10-pound weights. And so these bodybuilders invented super slow motion training, whereas with a normal rep, it might be a two reps down, two reps up. Yeah. They would do something like 30 seconds up, 30 seconds down, or 60 seconds up, 60 seconds down. And their intention solely was to see how much they could make it more difficult and challenging yes. with yeah their limited amount of weight. Yes. Now, there is there is uh, diminishing returns. Like You can't just go like ridiculous with slow-mo training and expect better and better results. In fact, at some point, when the time under tension is too long, it becomes an endurance exercise rather than a strength training exercise. Mm -hmm. But that being said, uh, slow motion training, if you go like, if you do like a 30 second rep, think about how long a set net normally takes you, right? So how, how long would a set of 15 reps traditionally take you? Yeah, 30 to, to 45 seconds. Right, yeah. so if you did one rep- That took 30 to 45 seconds. The time under tension, similar, I had and a, you're gonna get, and you will get some interesting I results. I had a boss that yeah. competed in bodybuilding. He was a little guy. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. He, I had a boss who was- He had the shoe skates. Yes, he did. Yeah, and he used, to, he used to roll <laughs> around. You guys already know this. Yeah, yeah right? He's a weirdo. Uh. And he, he was kind of, yeah, he was a different guy for sure. Uh, and this was the, the first wheelies? time- yep. Oh, yeah, he, he had, around the gym in him. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, great physique, though. He did great, great physique. Shredded. And this is how he trained. I'll never forget watching him train. He would go grab like a pair of eighty-pound dumbbells and do one rep. Mm -hmm. Very, very slow. And so he and like you bring up the point of like you know that's limiting because you can't you know you don't want to do it for you know three minutes because then it becomes endurance. Right. And he wouldn't do that. He would just do it for. And he had this incredible physique, and he trained every muscle group like this. It would be one to two reps tops, and it would be incredibly slow. And he would pick a weight that's probably up there towards his, you know, eighty percent or so. Oh, interesting! I've never seen anybody do that. Yes, that's how he trained, and that always, not like sometimes he always mm -hmm. trained this way. And he had a great physique, yeah, and I, I see and it makes sense. And this was a young guy. Now I see tremendous value. For somebody who's uh, older, totally, and because this is way safer. If you grab a weight that you can control on, on a fifteen second negative, it's it's a weight that is a, for sure a lot lighter than a weight that you could probably push you know out five or six reps with. So the fact that you can control it like that and you're not just using the the rebound effect, which a lot of people do when they when they're when they're coming out of the negative, uh, I just think that's really really valuable for that that clientele i'd imagine there'd be a lot of other like benefits to it like cognitive benefits and like focus benefits you know for going like super slow and being under that amount of tension that whole time and being able to account for every little movement and everything like that i think that your, it, your brain well, would be highly uh, a spark to that point i i use that I use that as a great way to teach form. Of course. Mm -hmm. So if I had a client that was, and I wouldn't do it the whole 
the whole set or the whole workout like this. But if let's say I was teaching something as basic as like a straight bar curl and it doesn't matter how many times I showed him, he was still rocking the elbows and doing all stuff. I would then go, okay, we're going to go real lightweight. And I'm like, you're going to, I want you to go super slow. You're going to take 30 seconds. I want you to count in your head while you do this. And I would be positioning his body. So as he got to different parts of the rep, readjust, readjust, I would adjust. Readjust, I would adjust. adjust. Yeah. I'd be like, no, no, no. So your elbows are going to go. And then I would readjust. Yep, yep. And so once they felt that go through like two or three, like really slow reps, it, it would click for them like oh i need to keep myself yeah. like this so we really used to do some interesting stuff like this for sports training where we do squats but then we'd have somebody sort of pushing them from one side so they had to account for that type of force with as they're going down so that way too like it was like a, a stability issue too like if somebody had a little bit of instability they could really address it by going super slow and then you know accounting for that all the way down yeah well, well with this you you get great stability and you get great connection. Like if you have trouble connecting to a muscle in a compound lift, do a really slow rep, right? Because as I'm going down in a squat and I, if I want to feel my glutes, I can each increment, readjust, and continue to con concentrate on the muscle that I'm trying to target. For example, a bench press, right? One thing you could do with a bench press is you could focus on the fact that the chest is what's bringing the humerus to center, right? So what I could do is I could create tension bringing my hands in and I can bring my arms out as I go down and know that the chest is resisting that kind of outward motion. And as I come up, I'm focusing on bringing the elbow in rather than extending the arm, which is a tricep. So it allows you to connect. It builds stability. What it doesn't do is it doesn't contribute well to speed or power or athleticism, except for from a stability standpoint. I think this is a great technique to throw in occasionally. Yeah. I don't think it replaces traditional resistance training, but I do think- Or the, for beginners, too. Yeah, I, I think it's a great, I mean, it's great to do like a week, mm -hmm. throw in a week of doing this, or an exercise. Yeah, like, an exercise, I can see that. Or an exercise, yeah, yeah. and see how it feels. The pump you get from this is insane, by the way. You get I mean, an incredible pump from doing I it. I mean, I do this, uh, you know, like almost unintentionally. So at home, we only have up to 50-pound dumbbells. I was doing shoulders the other day, and I can do a lot more than 50-pound dumbbells. And so, you know, I was like, wow, I'm gonna, I want to get my shoulder workout. So my presses, I just, I did these, you know, five extremely slow yep. reps. So yeah, no, I think it's I think it's great value, and I think it it's especially for specific groups. Now, obviously, to your point, if you're an athlete or you have uh, specific goals, but for the average person, um, intermittently using this into your routine or doing a phase of it every once yep. in a while, or just sl every once in a while doing that with an exercise, mm -hmm. and I like to pick an exercise that you you're 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 not the greatest at form and technique right. wise. It's a good excuse for you to slow it down, highlight and, the discrepancy. That's right. Totally. That's right. Next question is from Hades Gray 9. How effective are upright rows in developing the shoulders? What are the best exercises to have a well balanced and developed shoulder? This is one of those exercises that we were told was bad. that you should never have somebody do, right? right? That it's real bad for the shoulder, it's going to cause lots of problems. And I want to be very clear uh, definitely more risk with an upright row because it requires more stability. But if you can do these properly with good control, they're very, very safe. Now, that being said, I love the upright rows for developing the shoulders. In fact, I would put it in the top 10, definitely maybe even top five of the best exercises for developing shoulders. And, and mainly it's because of this. All other effective shoulder exercises involve a combination of shoulders and triceps. So you get that, that shoulder tricep recruitment pattern, right? So an overhead press, right? Shoulders and triceps. Mm -hmm. Well, with an upright row, it's shoulders and biceps. As I'm pulling up, mm -hmm. triceps are not even activated. It's my biceps. So it's a different feel to the shoulders. And I, it's again, it's one of my favorite exercises. In fact, I, it's always in rotation with my shoulder. Workout. Well, I also think that it, it, it incorporates all three parts of the shoulder really well. Mm. Right, a lot of shoulder exercises, I mean, you can't isolate a part of the shoulder, but a lot of shoulder exercises are targeting a specific part of the shoulder, mm -hmm. your laterals, your front delts, or your rear delts. But in the upright row, you 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 pull with the rear delt, the laterals are incorporated, and even the front is incorporated mm -hmm. with the way that you pull in it. So it's, a, it's one of my favorite exercises to do for the shoulders. Now, as a trainer, I was told that we weren't supposed to do it because everybody is so rounded forward. Yeah. Everybody's so rounded forward, and then you're doing this that exercise was, that's going to tighten them up in that position. Well, more. and I think, too, if, yeah, if you're not addressing uh, some of those postural deviations, like in that, you may be reinforcing bad patterns, uh, you know, but uh, once once you get all that accounted for and you're able to uh, 
uh, get set your shoulder in a good position where it's 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 you know it's back it's down it's 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 locked in place uh you, you know it has nothing but value from there in terms of like what it provides for development yeah. for the shoulder yeah you know what's funny is that if you do upright rows properly with full range of motion especially at the top where you're actually engaging the upper back musculature it's not a bad exercise for posture. It actually becomes a good one. So that's right. how I cued it. Because I was told that, and I still love the exercise, I was like, okay, well, if everyone, if I'm being told that it's bad because it's just promoting more forward shoulder, mm. when I cue it, I'm going to cue it as that's where you come from, mm. right? So as you pull up, I'm already cueing rear delt and trap back, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like this, you pull back versus some people, they do this like kind of raise where they're like, they shrug right. their shoulders. No, and I like to bring it close to the body at the top. Yes, and, and you pull, pull and squeeze. Yep, right. yep. Yeah. Pull, squeeze, yep. Next question is from Coach Cure. Do you find the reverse grip bench press useful, or is it just an old school overrated Man, move? I cannot remember the last time I did. It's been a long time since I've done this exercise. So I, you know, when I got introduced to these, there was a a power lifter that <sighs> yeah, was in the magazines a yes, lot who used to do his bench press. Something always. Clark. Uh, he he looked like he, he was, had the record at one point. Did yeah, he? Yeah, maybe Doug can look him up. He was like he was he was either Filipino or Hawaiian, massive dude. And he would bench press like 700 pounds with this reverse grip. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, what? Like, yeah, what's this, the advantage there? What's the value, right? So reverse grip bench presses, first off, um, got to get comfortable with them, okay? Because you don't want to fail on that. And also racking with the reverse grip can be very scary. Yeah, this is like a good partner exercise. It's a good Yikes. partner exercise or get yourself in position and practice and, and learn how to, how to do it right. Um, did you, oh, and was it Anthony Clark? Yeah, show, show a picture of this guy. So- this is the guy that, um, that... I can't believe you remembered that. I don't, I don't know. Just I remember... Random. I know. I remember that guy. Yeah, there I he is. Could never, I would never be able to... Wow, look at you remembered all that. Yeah, he was Filipino. Yeah, so... And he would bench like ridiculous uh, uh, amounts of weight with the, with the reverse grip. But anyhow, the reverse grip, what it does is it forces the elbows in. Yeah, 805 is his bench uh, record. Yeah, so it, 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 <laughs> he passed away actually in uh, 2005. So. That's insane. Um, it forces the elbows in, so you can use more front delt. And believe it or not, elbows in actually works, also Tries works it. the upper chest mm. more because of the way that the fibers of the upper chest orient when your elbows well, are in. Decelerating come up. too. I mean, aren't you like engaging your biceps a bit more mm -hmm. as well? Maybe stabilization. Just stabilizing it? Yeah. I don't, a lot of tricep though. Yeah, a lot of tricep. Tricep well, front delt yeah. And, yeah. and you get that upper chest. Now I noticed when I did these and I started practicing them and get good at them that I got a little carryover to my regular bench press. And this is why I started hmm. doing them because you know, back then bench press was the- I liked them. I was on a kick for a while where it was, I used to put it in the routine. That's why when he brought this, I was like, wow, I haven't even thought about that exercise in so long. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I mean, here's a great part. Once you've been lifting for a really long time, it's a great movement and you can absolutely, you know, I, where would you put it though? Are you guys putting it in as a, a replacement of a chest exercise yep. or would you put it in as a OC? Oh, so I would use it more often like a, like a close bench press for your triceps. Mm -hmm. I would sometimes do a reverse. No, I would, I, I so would it was do a it, tricep thing. I would me. do it instead of a bench press uh, or I would do it uh, as a, another press for chest, right? So if I did my bench press. See, I, I use it for class. triceps. Mm -hmm. That's, and mm -hmm. by the way, you can do that. Yes, you can. You can, you in an exercise, especially like that one, you can put more emphasis on one muscle more than the other, like Sal mm -hmm. was talking about, the main ones that are incorporated there. If you're trying to get the chest out of it, you can really focus mm -hmm. on chest. If mm -hmm. you want triceps, you can focus on using more. That's what's kind of cool about compound lifts is you can mentally concentrate on a muscle that you want to take over the lift more. Yeah, you know you know what really, too, what it does with the bench is, you know how if you want to bench a lot of weight, how you get real tight and you kind of suck in the elbows and activate the lats? The reverse grip bench press really encourages that tight feeling. In fact, I'm surprised, Justin, yeah, that you've I never done this. I've never, yeah, experimented. It's this got an, my brain, uh, you know, going. This like is an right this exercise has your name all over. I, yeah. I feel like if you did them, you'd actually love. Well, them. it's interesting because it, you know how the, the the stance. I don't know if it's like Taekwondo where they always have this position. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it just reminds me of that. It's like the power stance. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've never messed with that. I know. W would you also then experiment with doing something uh, like uh, if if you take that and then you bring it back over your head and then you do some pull? Oh, with the reverse wow. grip. Wow. So you do like a pullover to a press? Yeah, I'm wondering. That's an interesting exercise. Yeah, uh, I don't know. 
those. Yeah, would, I'd be the, weird. Well, the amount of weight you could probably press is not old. much. Yeah, you I mean, yeah you'd have to you'd have to use light weight in order to do that. No, so I mean by itself. Like I would just be using yeah for 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 doing that with just the reverse grip. I'm just thinking about using reverse grip. I'm have to experiment. Well, like that. Sal said, I think I mean this this uh, exercise I think it would would be in your wheelhouse. This I mean, is like it's, place it's your, strength. your strength. Yeah, it's your strengths. Uh, I mean, so I, I imagine you know as many times as I've done it, we could probably do it right now. You probably out outperform <laughs> Sal and I both because those are your strengths. Next question is from Rary Walnuts. What's the proper amount of volume per body part per week? Is it a different amount for the larger muscles versus the smaller muscles? Uh, yeah, you know, okay, so uh, you're, what you're going to hear us say is that this is very different from person mm -hmm. to person, which it is. That being said, studies show that the total set volume, so for a whole week, whether you work out your body parts twice a week, three days a week, or once a week, is anywhere between 10 to about 18 sets. So you got a pretty big range. Most people doing well around 12 total sets per body part per week. Now, is it different for larger muscle groups or smaller muscle groups? No, not really. Probably because the smaller muscle groups are getting work typically done with the larger muscle groups, and we don't typically count that volume. So in other words, I'm, I'm only going to count the volume for my triceps when I'm working my triceps, although when I do my shoulder presses and my bench presses, my triceps are obviously going to be uh, quite involved. But that number is a general number. And here's the truth. The truth is uh, you got to figure this number out for yourself. The right dose for you is what's going to build the most muscle and give you the best results. More than that is going to slow down your progress, and less than that is going to slow down uh, your progress. So, and, and my number changes. Uh, I definitely, there are times when I'm doing closer to 20 sets per body part per week. And then there's times when these sets are much lower, but well, usually it's the intensity. And there's, that there's such an individual variance for yeah. a person too. Like some people can just handle so much. I mean, we, you talk about this a lot with your legs, like your legs can handle so much more volume than other body parts. I mean, I was thinking about that, uh, yesterday I was training shoulders here and I can just, I can take a lot on my shoulders. Yeah, same. I could, do I could take a lot on my shoulders. I barely have to hit my chest or my back to get as sore. So, and I, I've, I've found that it to be unique to every person. So you really have to figure out where that, that point is for you and certain muscle groups, you're going to be able to do, uh, you know, more than others. And so once you figure that out and then trying to track it and then slowly scale. And then the other thing too, is like when you scale it, I think that the mistake that most people make is they go right to, oh, I can handle so much more. Like mm -hmm. if I'm just starting and I've been it's inconsistent. It's going to be very gradual. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to. In fact, my goal when I was, because I was tracking this a lot when I was competing, uh, my goal was always to make sure I at least accomplished what I did last week or a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Because what most people have a tendency to do is to go backwards a little bit. They start out the first week, this is their volume. Maybe they track that way for a couple of weeks and then they have a, a slow week and then they go down and then they overcompensate, they overcorrect, and then they go way hard. The other, it's like no, you don't need to do that. Just a tiny bit. This all, all, this, this was like a pattern that I had to figure out, like where I would take a week off or something. I would be on a break, and then I'd come back and I'd try and, and and hit the same amount of volume that I was doing, and it would just destroy myself. And then I would go through that process of like repair, damage, heal, you know. And so I'm just basically healing my way back to get to thinking that I like that was the most effective way to yeah. do it was to just hammer my Stuff to get back to that kind of volume. Yeah, and there's also this like there's the there's your limit in terms of how much volume you can handle that you can recover from, and then there's the ideal amount of volume that's yeah, going to build great point. the most muscle and give you the best results. And those are different. Like I can handle more volume than I currently do, but doing so will actually reduce my progress and my my goals. Right? We'll, we'll, Such we'll, a get, good point. Me, we'll slow down my progress towards my goals. I should say. So there is a right dose, and it's not the most you can do. The most you can do is the most you can heal from, but that's not the, the right dose that'll give you the best adaptation. So, and I want to say, because I used to fall for that all the time, like, yeah. oh, I, I recovered from that. Let me add more. Oh, I recovered for that, and then and then I'll, for some reason I dropped the volume for whatever reason, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, yeah. like then your I'm body stronger. Takes off. Yeah. yeah, like what the hell's going on? Mm -hmm. I I, I thought I could handle that before, which I could. It just was more than uh, that that was ideal for my body to to progress. Look, if you like our content, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have all kinds of guides there that can help you with all kinds of fitness goals. It's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam. Everything you do as a trainer is selling. Now, you might not be selling 
for money always. You might not be selling products always or even services always, but you're constantly selling ideas. In fact, here you are talking to Mrs. Johnson, who has never exercised cons 